Microcontrollers are products of the digital age. This means that they operate in the digital domain of finite timing driven by a clock signal. You've heard of clock signals before. Modern processors typically run at clock speeds of 1, 2, or 3 GHz, which is blazingly fast. It means the processor can execute 1 to 3 billion instructions per second. For most embedded system applications, speeds of this magnitude is beyond overkill. Think about our previous experiment where the main function simply checked a pin's input to see if input equaled logic zero. Would we really need to check that a billion times a second to make a functional system? Perhaps in a life or death situation, yes, but generally the answer is no way. Because of that fact, microcontrollers typically run at slower clock rates in the kilohertz and megahertz ranges. If you look at the datasheet of the ATmega328 that we are using, you'll see that it has an internal clock of roughly 8 MHz, and it also has another, slower internal clock that runs at 128 kHz. But it can also run off of any external clock up to 20 MHz, like the 16 MHz crystal we've been using. While those numbers and clock speeds might seem slow in comparison to a modern processor, 20 MHz or 20 million instructions per second for the ATmega328 is actually still insanely fast. 20 MHz means one instruction runs every 50 nanoseconds. Also inside of the ATmega328 microcontroller are hardware timer modules that increment based off of the clock signal. In the next few sections, we'll see how the Arduino uses these timer modules to provide us with easy to use functions that control microcontroller timing through software. Before we can look into the microcontroller timing, we need to have the hardware schematic explained and understood. Luckily for this lesson, the hardware will stay the same as the previous lesson, so we'll only quickly look over it. The 5 volt regulator circuit is built to provide power for the entire circuit. Then these regulated power and ground connections go to the ATmega328 microcontroller. The push button reset circuit is added to allow resetting the microcontroller. Next, the USB to serial converter module is connected to allow uploading programs. The frequency control circuit connects to X1 and X2 of the ATmega328. And finally, an LED for showing output is connected to digital pin 13, and a push button for allowing input connects to digital pin 8. And that's the complete hardware schematic. Now before we jump into the software side of the theory, let's take a look at what the Arduino has for controlling microcontroller timing. If we go to the arduino.cc website and check out the reference section, you'll see a section labeled time with four functions. First is the millis function. If you use this millis function, it will give you a value that is equal to how many milliseconds have passed since you first powered up the microcontroller. The next function is the micros function, and it gives you a similar value as the millis function, but instead of milliseconds, it gives you how many microseconds have passed since the microcontroller powered up. The next function down is the delay function. The delay function is very heavily used in Arduino programming. It pauses your program for a certain number of milliseconds that you must specify. And the last time function is the delay microseconds function. Now this does the exact same thing as the delay function, only it delays for a certain number of microseconds that you need to pass to the function. Armed with these new four time functions, let's go to our program to see how we can control timing. The most basic type of timing is controlling how fast an LED blinks. As before, we first put in the setup and loop functions of the program. Next in the setup, we initialize pin 13 as an output, since that is where our LED is connected. Now, in the loop function, we first tell pin 13 to be a logic 1, or plus 5 volt. Then we use the delay function we saw before to delay for 1000 milliseconds, or 1 second. After that delay, we tell the output at pin 13 to become a logic 0, or 0 volts. This will turn the LED off. And afterward, we add another 1000 millisecond delay. 
Since the loop function runs continually over and over, this program should make the LED at pin 13 blink off for one second and then on for one second, again and again and again. If your brain is overloaded with theory, then go ahead and skip to the experiment section now and test out the blinking LED code. Otherwise, let's take a look at a program that uses the millis function to check how long since the microcontroller was powered up. As before, we start with the setup and loop functions, and in this program, we use a long integer to store a time value. In the setup function, we'll initialize digital pin 8 as an input since that's where the push button is. Then we'll initialize digital pin 13 as an output as that's where the LED is. And lastly, we'll initialize digital pin 13 to be plus 5 volt or logic 1 so the LED is turned on as soon as the program starts. Now in the main loop function, as in the last lesson, we use an integer for checking if the button was pressed. If the button was pressed, first we turn off the LED and then store the current time in milliseconds since the program was started. The last bit of code will be another if statement. This if statement checks to see if 1000 milliseconds has passed since the push button was pressed. And if it has, the LED is turned back on. So this program, as it turns out, is a simple timer. If the push button is pressed, it will turn off the LED for exactly one second and then turn it back on. We saw the schematic in the theory section. It used all the same parts as the input and output lesson. But as we always do, let's go through all the parts one by one to make sure there is no question about what is needed for the experiment. The big parts that you'll need are a jumper wire kit, the parts kit, and a breadboard. The smaller parts from the parts kit that you'll need are the 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, two 100 ohm resistors, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, two 10 microfarad capacitors, two push buttons, an AT Mega 328 microcontroller with Arduino compatible bootloader, a 16 megahertz crystal, two red LEDs, two 22 picofarad capacitors, a 9 volt battery connector, four jumper wires, a USB to serial converter with jumper wires, and finally, a 9-volt battery and a laptop with the Arduino IDE installed. Here is a sped-up time-lapse of the circuit, built part by part. For those of you that are new, you can see a detailed explanation of the circuit as it is built in Lesson 2. And so, with the circuit built, let's plug in the USB to serial converter and power up the circuit. Then bring up the first program from the theory section and program it to the microcontroller. And just as we expected, the LED blinks off for one second and back on for one second, over and over and over. Now let's see what happens when we change the delay value from 1000 milliseconds to 250 and upload this new program to the microcontroller. This should make the LED blink faster. And as you can see, the change did indeed make the LED blink a fair amount faster. So now let's take a look at the second program we saw in the theory section. Load it up into the Arduino IDE and upload it to the microcontroller. At first, the LED remains on, and then when we press the push button, the LED stays off for exactly one second, and then it turns back on, exactly as we programmed it to. Haha, <laughs> now we are truly masters of digital timing.
Exact timing is so crucial in the real world that many times we overlook how necessary it is. Sure, we need timers for clocks, watches, ovens, microwaves, but we also need millisecond and microsecond timing for things like tachometers, cell phone communication, and pacemakers. Therefore, digital timers found in microcontrollers are useful not only just for counting how much time has elapsed, but also for using those measurements to create specifically timed output necessary for driving other time-sensitive devices. To go even further, things like the space shuttle and even the day trading machines on Wall Street rely on exact micro and nanosecond timing to control automated tasks that can save lives or make people very rich. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Microcontrollers are masters of the digital domain, but digital is an idea created by humans. The real world is an analog world, and in order to understand that real world, microcontrollers must interface with it. Continue on to the next lesson to learn about analog to digital converters.